I've just seen life and death in Pompeii and Herculaneum at the British Museum. Slight lie, I'm actually still in the exhibition now. And I think it's essential that you see this show too, because it's marvellous. It's full of fantastic loans, many of them unseen in Britain before, which have come from Naples, the famous archaeological museum there. And the premise of the show is extremely intelligent and effective. Paul Roberts, the curator, has created a kind of generic Roman house for a wealthy, well-to-do, possibly a banker, but wealthy Roman, which you might have discovered in Pompeii and Herculaneum before the volcanic eruption of AD 79. And the exhibition follows that plan. So this, for instance, is the large atrium. Off to the side of the atrium, you can see a bedroom containing one of the most moving objects in the whole exhibition, a carbonized wooden baby's cradle. There are also frescoes which reveal slightly strange Roman sexual customs, a couple making love in a bed whilst a slave is watching on, who quite knows what was going on there. There's a cabinet full of little bits and pieces you might discover in a bedroom, objects containing pigment that would have actually been used to rouge a Roman matron's cheek. And then if you walk in here, and it is the press views, there are lots of people taking pictures at the same time. This space is supposed to be the garden. Suddenly we're outside, it's much brighter. And it contains one of the most, if not the most, infamous, notorious object in the whole show, which is this enigmatic sculptural group of the wild god Pan having sex with a nanny goat, tenderly taking her tufted beard so that he can stare deep into her eyes, the act of penetration plain for all to see, but the meaning of this piece remains quite unclear. I say enigmatic because we don't really know what function, if you like, this served in antiquity. Was it meant to be tender? Is it a scene of rape? Is it violent, comic, erotic? We'll never quite know, but it really makes us feel that the past is quite distant, as well as feeling so approachable when you see pigment which was used to go on a Roman woman's cheeks. Of course, there is a reason why all of these objects have survived and why we understand so much about Pompeii and Herculaneum, and that is the terrible tragedy that occurred in AD 79 when the two towns were destroyed by the eruption of Vesuvius. Lots of people are familiar with the plaster casts of the voids left by bodies which had decayed and had been in the ash from Pompeii. But there's another, well, this is actually a person. This is a real woman's skeleton, which was discovered in the villa of a Plontis near Pompeii. And it's been cast in resin. And it's very, very difficult to look at because when you actually get down and see her face, it's a grimace of pure pain and anguish, and it's a reminder of the sombre context for this show. It's why it's called Life and Death in Pompeii and Herculaneum. One of the things that I've been particularly excited by about this exhibition is that quite often you come to the British Museum and you see artefacts, objects that tell us about history. But here in this show, there are also fantastic, beautiful works of art. One of my favourites, this statuette of a drunken Hercules, the god. He's been at a banquet, his wreath is tipped. You can look at his face, he's clearly pissed. And he's gone out into the garden with his big pot belly. And he's about to relieve himself, which is quite funny. But the craftsmanship, the, the technique with which that's been created is very good. There's a garden room with frescoes of this lush vegetation, which is transporting which would have been perhaps in a study, um, but it immediately takes you into a realm of the imagination. This is a terrific, immaculate exhibition full of magic, mystery, a real sense of palpable beauty. It's a must-see show, and it transforms our understanding of ordinary life in the ancient Roman world.